when you're clapping a lot. Um, so our first speaker this evening is uh, Lenka Kralova. Kral yeah, Lenka Kralova. And she's a software developer. And she first hosted this in February, so I have some very tall stilettos to fill. Yeah, hi. Um, my girlfriend was in that room, and I was afraid that she'll miss the show, but she's coming here, so an applause for her, please. And thank you. And I didn't get the thing to uh, forward the slides. So, oh, it's here, it's here. Thank you. So, I think we can start the countdown. I'll start my, the story of my life. I have 30 seconds per slide, so it's going to be very quick. So my name is Lenka. There you go. This is what I looked like when I was a kid. I'm 6 and 10 on this picture. Uh, this is how I perceived myself. This is how I saw myself in my fantasies my entire childhood, and it was the biggest secret of my life. I never told anybody, uh, up to now, of course. And this is what grew out of that uh, little boy. So. That's me being adult, like you see a lot of testosterone. But uh, the gender dysphoria was always there, it was always present. And I had uh, various ways how to cope. One of them is, was to make uh, digital art. So this is my painting on iPad, and this is how I saw myself as adult. This was like, I was turning my fantasies into art, and I thought this is the way I will cope until the death, basically. But it didn't happen. Uh, at the age of 38, I realized that uh, I have to do something with my life, and I started coming out to people about my identity. And uh, this, this is a small town of Pisek, and this is a bench where I came out to my mom. So it took about three hours, I smoked two, two packs of cigarettes, and we cried a lot, and it was very emotional, but it turned out very well. And uh, all my coming outs were turned up very well, except for the one to my ex-wife. So she didn't take it, we had to divorce, and it was really, really bad. But after three years, we, we became friends now, and it's kind of okay. Uh, when I came out to everybody, I knew that uh, I could start doing things on me, on my body, on, on my face that would be visible. So on this photo, this was the first time in my adult life that I got shaved. Uh, this was like I shaved last time when I was like 15 and then when I was 38. So this is the first time I saw my face with no beard. And I did a little bit of Photoshop on the picture on the right, right hand side. So I changed my hair and I did a bit of makeup and jewelry. And this was the first time I saw like my face in future. So this is a legendary photo of my life. And uh, it's very important to have visions in life. So this was my own vision of my future. And yeah. <laughs> And dreams come true, as you can see. So always have dreams, have visions, and they will fulfill. That's uh, the motto of my speech today. Uh, yeah, but it didn't. It 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 wasn't any. It was not an easy path to get there. So this was basically the worst period of my life when I realized that I really don't want to be a man anymore. But I didn't take the hormones, and I didn't look like a woman yet. So I had this androgynous period. And uh, because everybody knew at work and so on, it, it, was, it was quite OK. And uh, of course, people were staring at me, but I didn't pay any attention to it. And um, I somehow survived this difficult period. This was the first day I took hormones. So this was a big, big day of my life when I got the recipe for, for the hormones. And this was like basically the last day I'm on testosterone. And this is what it did to my face one year later. So this photo is taken exactly one year after that and the other one about the same time. 
And here you can see it like four, four years of my life, always a photo taken in October, like what the hormones did to my face. Um, somehow I started a YouTube channel during the way. It like happened, I don't know how it happened, but it happened. And um, my YouTube channel recently got one million views, all the videos together. And mainly I do interviews with other trans people. At this moment, uh, there are 43 interviews um, with trans people about their life and about their struggle and how they live in Czech Republic. But uh, recently I started also doing interviews with uh, parents of trans kids. So I invite you to my YouTube channel, Transu. It's in Czech language at this moment, but maybe in future I'll also do some English uh, language interviews. I really enjoy making clickbait titles for my videos. And this is the one I'm really proud of. It says, they forced me to watch child porn. The trick here is that it's not a clickbait, in fact. It's completely true. So this girl, she's a worldwide uh, famous uh, fashion model. She's a trans girl. And she was uh, describing, in, in my interview, she was describing uh, an experience with Czech sexologists, because in, in Czech Republic, it's still treated as a sex thing, as a sexological thing. If you want hormones, you have to go to sexologists, and they treat you as, some of them treat you as if you were a deviant. And she was forced to watch very disturbing pictures while she had electrodes attached to some uh, private parts of her body, measuring whether she gets aroused or not, just like somehow to measure her gender identity, I don't know. And this thing is still happening probably in Ostrava and in Brno. So in, in, the, in Czech Republic, if you are trans, it's all about luck. Whether the sexologist you'll go to will be a good one or if, it will, if he or she will be evil. And the evil ones will force you to watch child porn. And it's a real child porn. Uh, it was confiscated by the police. Uh, and I cannot imagine that I will ever fall asleep when I, when I would be forced to watch something like that. And then I started doing activism. I became a member of a transparent organization, and this is me having a speech on a demonstration. And I, in the meantime, I had many speeches on demonstrations. So that's it. Uh, yeah, this is me speaking at the British Embassy. So this is a moment when I was kind of proud of myself. And there is just Lava like here looking very serious. He is serious, and I'm, I'm also serious, and it says Happy Pride, and I love, love this picture. And all these like important people in front. Uh, yeah. Um, Czech president Miloš Zeman once said uh, publicly in TV that trans people are disgusting to him. And it was a great PR for us. I was, that, that week I was invited to four different TV interviews was amazing and this one is DVTV and my mom called me after that and she said that she is really proud when she saw it so yeah thank you yeah and I thank Miloš Zeman because yeah the no no one has made such a big PR event for uh, trans people in Czech Republic to this date and this is what's problematic. This is the map of countries of Europe, which requires sterilization for legal gender recognition. So in order to change your gender in your documents, you have to cut a piece of your body. And not only that, because uh, we have another stupid law that uh, you can change your name to whatever you want, as long as your name fits your gender. So if I, there, there is a murderer who gets out, uh, out of prison after 20 years, and he can change uh, his name to anything to protect himself, to protect his identity. But I'm not allowed to take the name Lenka Kralova because it's strictly a female name, and I'm not allowed to do that. So uh, what happens is that my ID card looks like this. This is my real name. So I was introduced as Lenka Kralova, but it's not my official legal name. This is what my official legal name is. 
And I have to show this ID card to various people. Each time you need to identify yourself somewhere. If I want to borrow skis, for instance, or if I go to sleep in a hotel, I have to show my ID card. And we have GDPR, we are protecting the uh, we are protecting information of people, but trans people, if they don't cut a piece of their body, they, they are showing their deep, deepest uh, secret to everyone, or not to everyone, but to, to people who shouldn't, uh, shouldn't be knowing that at all. Uh, there is the same ID card in this picture, but it's being held in the hands of the Minister of Interior. So this shows a new hobby of mine. I'm showing my ID card to politicians. <laughs> and I'm also showing them the map. So I already met the chairman of the Senate. I met three different ministers, more than 10 different members of parliament. And, and I always show them the map. And I show them my ID card. And I explain them what our problem is. And very often, they have no idea. <laughs> and this is, this is Ivan Bartos, another minister. So. We have a f funny government right now. <laughs> this is a real pinnacle of my life. This is a fashion shoot for the Maminka magazine, which means mummy. So I was like the first daddy in mummy. <laughs> and the funny thing is that this dress is by Oscar de la Renta, and it's like two and a half thousand euro. And it's me lying in the grass with a dress worth two and a half thousand euro on me. And that's like the pinnacle of my life. Uh, we are in the Pride Business Forum, so uh, this slide is about the workspace equality. Uh, I do the activism, I do the YouTube channel, but it doesn't pay my rent. I normally go to work like regular people. I work as a software engineer. I happen to work in a company that is a part of Pride Business Forum. They are called Pure Storage here. Thank you. Uh, Pure Storage is one of the fastest growing companies on, uh, in Silicon Valley and they produce hardware and software for uh, mass data storage. So if you have some artificial intelligence in your company and you need some petabytes of data to be really mass uh, uh, processed, you, that's the company you would look for. Uh, we actually produce the hardware devices for that. And I'm showing my uh, access badge to the building. And you can see Lenka on it, even though it's not in my ID card. This is a miracle in some companies. Some companies wouldn't allow you to do that. And in pure storage, I'm Lenka everywhere. I'm Lenka in my email address. I'm Lenka on Slack. Just love, we have Slack. <laughs> I'm uh, Lenka on the ID card. I'm Lenka everywhere. Basically, the only place where my original name is is my contract. And, uh, of course, some payroll systems. But uh, my colleagues, uh, they actually don't know my uh, real name. This is what's happening right now. Uh, yeah. So, um, I often go to schools and companies to have workshops and uh, discussions with students. I've been in more than 10 companies already, telling them about how to treat trans people at workplace. And the funny thing is that you can hire me if you want. Just talk to me on the break. And this is how love came into my life. So love life is, um, is an issue for trans people in general. And I met my la uh, the love of my life in front of the Hungarian embassy. So I have uh, speeches. Uh, when I have sp a speech on a British embassy, I have the speech inside of the embassy. If I have a speech at the Hungarian embassy, it's in front of it. So <laughs> that's the difference. So this is the sidewalk uh, in front of the Hungarian embassy. And all the speakers were supposed to stand on this box, but I was afraid to. I was afraid that I would fall off. So I stood next to it, and I was still higher than everyone else. And then all of a sudden, like a random girl just came out of the crowd, and she was holding this rainbow umbrella on top of me. And now we live together, and we got engaged, and it's, uh, it's a happy end. And uh, the demonstration was organized by Krzysztof Stupka, who will just come after me here. So thanks to Krzysztof for, for 
uh, and the one before, uh, yeah, that was also organized by Christoph. Sorry, I forgot to say. And this is us announcing our engagement in front of 5,000 people on Václavské náměstí. And that's the happy end. Thank you. Thank you. And I still have 40 seconds. I still have 40 seconds, but I don't know what to do with them. So let's have Q&A's then. What? I can't hear you. I'm sorry. You have no microphone. What? Slavic's what? Slavic's. Slavic squat. Can what is that? Slav squat. I have no idea what that is. No, I cannot do that. No, I'm not. I'm not doing that. Sorry. There are oh. there are questions for you. Yeah. So can maybe I, if you can come can up. Can I to come this and bring stage? you your questions? Yeah. I was moderating it last time, so I know what to do. So. <laughs> so I'll, I'll instruct you. So. So I'll read you a question. Yes. And and and, and then you do something amazing. Okay. So Linka. You are absolutely great, a hero for Thank us you. all. Let's get political. What is the biggest problem for trans people in our country, and how can companies help? It's a little one. Yeah, uh, well, there is one bigger problem. There's one big problem which is not legal, in fact, and that's that I said it here already, and that is that our issues are treated as sexual ones, that it's something to do with sex, still like the we are called transsexuals and it's all like revolving around sex. And this is mirrored in the legislation. So the, ma the, the biggest problem of trans people I spoke about already, it's, I was showing you the map, we still uh, the, require operation for gender recognition, which is a nonsense. And of course, the operation is important for some people, because some people have have a really strong body dysphoria and they need it in order to be happy, but certainly not everyone. And it's not my case. I started taking the hormones, then everyone started addressing me as a woman, and I realized that's all I need to be happy and I don't need to um, have my body cut. So the follow-up to that is how can companies help? <sighs> well, uh, I don't know if companies actually give money to the politicians. If they do, they can like say, okay, we all... <laughs> If, if you give some money to the politicians, you can tell them that you will stop giving them money unless they like change the law. And I don't know how, how actually I'm not quite sure how companies can like help with uh, the change of the legal system. But they can be supportive uh, to the employees for sure and to customers obviously. But I, what I showed here, I show, I show the, the card and this is an important thing because the Czech law doesn't allow you to change your name. And if, your comp if the company you work for allows you to use your name, that's a great benefit. And it's like a thousand times more than just hanging the rainbow flag on your building. Yeah, yeah, that's... Yeah. Uh, the second question, what would be your advice to parents of a kid who is struggling with their identity? Yeah. The parents, they are always afraid that their child is making it up. And there are children that are making it up. It's not like zero. It may happen, even though it's very unlikely. Um, but what I personally think is that they should always respect the identity that the kid wants. Because if you think about it, there is nothing to lose. Yeah? So, uh, in the, in the first hand, the kid wants the, the, the right pronouns and to use the right name. And it, there is no risk at all. Like you, you can, the only thing you're risking is that uh, maybe the rest of the family will be having some you know, bad comments about it or you'll be for laughs, but that's about it. There is not, not much to risk, and you don't need to like start hormones immediately and like do surgeries. Uh, the gender change surgeries are not allowed until the age of 18 anyway. So in this country, it's not the matter of the parents. And the hormones, it depends on the sexologist, but it's not like mainly about the hormones. The, the, the social transition is what is important. 
and uh, there is no reason to wait for doctors to approve it or something. They can start right away. And, and I understand it's difficult for the parents and also the fact that um, the gender is so tightly bound to the identity so that when a child is born, it's a son or it's a daughter and uh, it's, it's really difficult for some people to change this in their mind. I understand it. But if the parents change the pronouns, if they change the gender, they can see their kid being happy. And I think that this is the proof. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. OK, the last one. We got a, we got a hard no on the Slavic squat. But I do think that you can imitate Zeman. Uh, you? I can't remember him uh, talking in English and uh, it's more and more difficult uh, for me but I can do it a uh, kind of uh, So I, this is my first time meeting this. You have to talk. The, okay, to the sorry. Yeah, no, I'm. I'm sorry. I'm used to teaching. I just shout at people. Um, I'm on Facebook, so this is very fancy and new for me. This this idea of not using pen and ink. Okay, those were your questions. That so, was any me. questions here? I can I can do the moderation myself. It's no problem. Any questions in the audience? Please, I'm sure you are having some questions. Don't be shy. There's no reason to be shy. How do you walk in those shoes? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's training. It's like <laughs> anything in life, you have to. It doesn't happen just by itself. You have to train and train, and then you just do it. It's like skating. It's like riding a bicycle. It's like walking. It's like I can't do that either. Foreign language. <laughs> it's like anything. A question, if I may. We talked about this last time, but I'm actually wondering how your wedding preparations are going. I didn't hear it, sorry. How are your wedding preparation going? How are we, uh, <laughs> so we got engaged and how the wedding preparations are going. They're now stuck a bit because we are waiting for the coalitions in Prague, how they will turn up. Because we need, uh, we, need um, we, we will not go to the church, right? We will go to the city hall and we need somebody to do the ceremony and who will not be calling me Mr. Tomas, you know? So we need somebody from the pirate party or so. So we are, we are waiting till the coalitions are done and then we start negotiating. And it will be during next year, I hope. It's beautiful. That's so cool. Can we come? Yes, yes, you can come. I, there's one thing I forgot to say when I was showing the slide. Uh, because, uh, of course, uh, equal sex marriages are not allowed in this country. But I'm legally a man. So I can marry my girlfriend. So that's like a... And she's here with us today. She's sitting in the first line. So, yeah, so this is like a... Oh, we have a question there. Okay. Maybe one more. Hi, Lenka. Hello. First of all, I want to say amazing, beautiful, love it. Thank so you. much. Very happy for you, very proud of you. Uh, my question is, if you would have a chance to you today talk to the eight-year-old, the photo that you, or I don't remember how old you were, um, in that photo, what would you say to that version of yourself today? Actually, I recently got exactly the same question. And I was thinking, and I would actually show my eight years old me my Instagram. I think that's more than words. I think pictures are much more than words. Thousands of words. Wonderful. Okay, thank you very much, Linka.